The yeah. recording has started. The, let's call the meeting to order at 6.02. We have a quorum. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Hearing none, is there any public comment? Again, hearing none. Uh, Janelle, let me pass this over to you so that we can uh, start the meeting with you introducing Olivia, please. Oops. Good evening. Um, oh, there you are. <laughs> there it is. So we have at CV Fiber hired our third full-time employee, Olivia Cantica, is here as our community relations manager, and we are so happy to have Olivia here with us. I will let Olivia talk a bit about herself, her background, and what she hopes to um, see with CB Fiber. Thanks, Olivia. Thanks, Janelle. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Olivia Contica. I live in Barrie, Berlin, somewhere on that border. Uh, I am originally from New York, so I am a transplant. I moved here about three years ago. Um, in terms of my background, I have a bachelor's in poli sci, and I actually went to law school. Uh, so I'm a lawyer by trade. However, I transitioned over into the world of legal marketing and business development, where I worked with a firm who had approximately 80 attorneys. So I did professional services for quite some time. And then I transitioned over into working in the world of startups, uh, working with early stage technology companies all through Fortune 50. So I've pretty much seen um, both sides of the world um, in terms of marketing and, and business development, but I'm very, very excited to be here. Uh, I'm really passionate about doing local community work and I want to be a resource not only for this board, but also moving forward a resource to our communities, which is our first and foremost priority. So my virtual door is always open. Feel free to email, call at any time. I'm open to any feedback, suggestions, brainstorms. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Olivia. We're so happy to have you. We are indeed pleased you're here. Thank you, Olivia. Thank you very much. Uh, shall we then move on with the uh, regular business of this meeting? I'm going to consider a, Olivia being here extraordinary business, <laughs> right? So let's let's move on with the regular business. Uh, Jeremy, can we uh, talk about the prior meeting minutes, please? Yeah. So I sent those out, but um, only a couple hours, about an hour and a half or so ago. So. Um, I think they're in okay shape uh, for approval, but wanted to, but I don't know that people have had enough of a chance to review. So um, I guess, yeah, Alan's shaking his head. So why don't we delay this until next meeting? <laughs> sorry, I was on a bike ride. Uh, I'm okay. sorry, I didn't get it done sooner. Things have been kind of crazy in uh, Jeremy world lately. So I apologize. Okay. I promise to read it quickly later tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, then let's move on. I'm not sure that we have a treasurer's report today, but uh, Ray, do we? I know we don't have a treasurer with us. Yeah, um, I'm surprised she's not here. But uh, no, so she, I, had, she had sent an email saying that she yeah. wasn't going to be able to make it. Oh, I didn't. I didn't see that. I think she said she's going to be later, like six thirty, yeah. maybe. No, I I do know that uh, today, just today, and in, in this afternoon, I think it was that we received from uh, Bonnie the reconciled uh, financials. And so um, we will we will send them out to the board so that you'll have them. And um, uh, I have no further information for you. No, okay, understood. Yeah, this is a little problematic with the timing. Um, I, I guess if our second Tuesdays move back a little bit farther in the month, then those months will have reconciled numbers before the meeting, but when the when we're short, on our on our number of days for second Tuesday, we won't have it. It's it's a little bit of a problem, but I think I will have to live with it uh, for now anyway. Uh, Janelle, let me let me pass this over to you. If I'm correct, Lucas is not able to be with us tonight. Um, but if if you would please the, the next few parts of the meeting, construction through the marketing, if you'd run through that, please. Absolutely. So I actually like to. Um put the highlight first because I don't want to bury it. And the highlight is that we actually are operational. 
And by that, I mean, we have six friendly subscribers up and running on the CV Fiber internet service. So I think we should acknowledge that. <laughs> we, we don't want to, we don't want to bury that. That's a huge deal. That's in CLO one. Um, Is any of them on tonight? No. No. At the meeting? No, I don't believe there are any. There are any uh, at the meeting. Uh, Janiel, there's a question from Siobhan. Siobhan, I was just wondering: Are they happy so far? Have we heard anything? They no. are happy so far, and actually, Olivia is going to give a marketing update after I talk, <laughs> and she's going to be delivering the the great news, and I'm sure she can speak okay. to. Awesome. The wonderful things that we've actually heard in terms of that, yes. Um, so so um, we are actively working on signing up more subscribers. So those are our first six friendlies. And so um, we, we will be signing up general, general population um, as soon as we finish testing the network. So the status we're at now is we are continuing to test the network. That involves testing the network itself to make sure the fibers work. And also the uh, the payment system, and also the um, sign up system. So it's it's a comprehensive, layered system of friendlies that we're testing, and then we'll be able to sign up the general subscribers. So that's where we are with operations. I sort of took it almost in reverse order, but I just I, I needed to get that out first. Construction wise, we we're doing great with crews. Actually, on today's call, we learned we have four aerial crews, one underground crew, and now two splicing crews. Splicing is what has to be done at the end of the construction uh, process. Um, we got about 70 miles of each strand and fiber, so the fiber is catching up to the strand. And we have now 993 passings, that's addresses that we've passed, possible subscribers. Um, construction is, is 192 signups for packages as of today. Thank you, David. Yes, 192 signups for packages as of today. That's a pre that's a pretty darn good take rate. I mean, without uh, just just not even being technically in service for the general population, we have 192 out of 993. Now, I'm not sure if that is exactly the um, the ratio, but those numbers are excellent for where we're at. Materials and warehousing. Um, we have ordered most of 400 miles. We've ordered all of the 400 mile uh, bill of materials that we thought we needed, but every once in a while, something new will be needed that we did not realize we needed in the field and we'll need to get it. Some of those are consumables or um, additional items that just didn't have, didn't make it onto the bill of materials, which is normal because sometimes you'll be able to use an existing piece in the field. Sometimes you can't. So um, there are things that we learn in the field as we go. So for the most part, we have the materials we need for 400 miles that should get us through all of next construction season as well as this construction season, um, minus the, the small items, consumables that we'll need to purchase. Warehousing is going well. Last month we had, or actually, I guess it was back in July, there were some significant floods, but there's been a lot of rain. And we have so far been able to escape any damage to the warehouse or materials. So we've been very lucky on that. Our warehouse managers are securing our outdoor storage uh, facility as well so that our fiber is going to be well protected over the winter. Um, and uh, so it, it, from an operational materials instruction standpoint, things are looking very positive. Um, I do see that Jeremy, you have your hand up. Yeah, um, I guess my question is, we have 400 miles of materials, give or take. Uh, do we have funds to have those materials installed or are we going to have to stop uh, installate or stop construction for for that first? So we do have uh, we, we we have the funds to continue all of the d distribution areas that we have started um, constructing that we have issued to our construction workers. Um, they tell us that we have about nine weeks of construction left, and and then of course there's additional work that needs to be done with testing with splicing. So we're we're looking to be busy throughout the rest of the year. 
as far as installing the next um, distribution areas, um, that is, uh, Jerry, did you want to speak to that or something yeah, related? No, to actually, I just, I just want to get to the point for Jeremy's question. We do not have sufficient funds to construct 400 miles. What we have found is that the funds that we have <laughs> are getting us through 200 some odd miles, and that'll be a big part of the discussion of the budget um, at, at when the, in the in the second part of our of of our of our meeting. So everything that Janiel has said is absolutely correct. But to cut to the chase on it, no, we don't have sufficient funds to construct all 400 miles. Things things were not as they seemed a year ago. Thank you for being very direct, Jerry. Yes, we have seen incredible in inflation and markup of, of costs uh, beyond what we anticipated. Um, they are uh, unprecedented. Um, so we're, we, yeah, we're, we're attacking that as we, as we can. Any other questions? Okay, so that's what I really wanted to share for construction, materials, warehousing, operations. But um, I, I know that we have much more exciting stuff that does bleed into the operations scope in marketing. Thanks, Danielle. Um, I wanted to start with a couple of testimonials that we've received from our friendlies in CLO one. I know sometimes it's it's difficult taking a step back and, and seeing all the nitty gritty, you know, construction details that are going on, but I want to emphasize in this group that we are really impacting the lives of our customers to date. So I'll start with one testimonial. And this is from one of our friendlies in CLO one. The fiber is great. I'm so happy to be finally hooked up. It's all I had hoped for. A far, far cry from the old days of dial-up than satellite internet. Most recently, high-speed internet through a competitor, another ISP, which I have now canceled. From another friendly. I have been so impressed with all the various guys. They have been all professional, informed, and able. It's been a pleasure doing business with them. So we've, in general, have been receiving really positive feedback. Um, if there are any ways that we can fine tune the friendly process, we have been on top of that as well. Um, I would say that in the past couple of weeks, we really have solidified the friendly process in terms of having an invitational letter, making sure that we are in constant communication uh, to iron out any kinks throughout the process. And so far to date, we've been really successful with CLO1. Now, moving forward for CLO2, we do have those letters sent out. They were sent out early this morning, and we'll be scheduling those calls, and we'll be moving on to the friendly selection for RSO1 and RSO2. So all in, we are taking our feedback from friendlies serious at this point because we want to make sure that we are continuously improving and integrating based on what we're, what we're hearing in the market. Now, as far as what we're hearing, there are areas in terms of uh, our messaging that requires a bit more clarity. As you know, there's a lot of technical uh, nuances in what goes on behind the scenes. And so we are updating our website. So you'll see some home homepage update updates, um, giving a bit more information, uh, transparency and clarity to our audience as well. So people who are sending us inquiries, trying to figure out where they are in the process, everything will be very clear cut on the homepage, um, and, and it is our responsibility to make sure that uh, we establish those trust relationships. So that's one improvement that we will be making to date on the site. Uh, secondly, in terms of the website as well, um, we're integrating with Smart Hub. So we will be able to take payments, uh, which is a really exciting uh, update for us. Chuck? Um, I, I want to start by just reiterating the first point that you made for for the board. Um, the point Jerry likes to make regularly of we are graduating from being a governing volunteer driven body to being a real live business with real live customers. And most of the people who visit our website never visit our governance pages. They don't oh. particularly care about them. <laughs> um, and, you know. For compliance reasons, we have to have them, so we can't get rid of them, um, but they don't need to be showcased front and center 
Uh, and, and, you know, what we need is to streamline the conversion subscription funnel of people getting to subscribe. Um, and so Olivia is making great strides on that front. And I thank you, Olivia. Now, to play devil's advocate, Olivia, what's Smart Hub? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Smart Hub is actually a piece of technology that is used across the country. So I want to say that it is a well established piece of technology, a, a, a payment system that is used for transactions. Some folks may even be uh, familiar with it here in the Vermont area, paying their own electric bills. So it might not even be something new for some of our customers as they come on board. Um, we are essentially using Smart Hub as a way to securely take payments uh, yeah. in a dashboard that is user-friendly and a way for folks to possibly update their uh, their plans moving forward. That's something that we've we've been talking about in the works by the end of the year. But also, people can update their credit card information. They can pay by phone. So essentially, making the payment uh, flow as frictionless as possible. Because we would hate for, for payment to be a friction area. Jeremy. Yeah, um, I know that WEC uses it, and um, you can report outages and stuff like that. Are there going to be other ways of detecting when we have an outage or will people be able to also report outages on the app? Yeah, that's an excellent question. I can certainly dig deeper for that. Um, right now, it's just establishing the the transactions, which I think is number one for us uh, to receive payments securely. Yeah. Um, as we as we become a more mature organization, which is the term that I'd like to use, um, I'd like to have our touch points with our customers increase so that people are well informed every every step of their journey with us. Jeremy, yeah, Waitsfield will not certainly huge... know. Waitsfield will know okay. when there's an outage. There's no question. I mean, <laughs> the the you know, they'll notice the light has stopped, right? Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I see Alan and R.D., and then Olivia, you may not be done, so we'll go back to you. But let's take Alan and R.D. right now. Yep. Muted. Sorry, I don't want to belabor the outage thing, but Wex, the problem with reporting online is with Wex smart meter system, there was a great promise. I don't know if you remember this back in the teens when they got, I don't know, 50 million bucks or whatever it was to install the system and they thought they would be able to use it for online outage reporting. And I don't quite understand what's missing from their system, but it has not worked. And one of the reasons they originally were interested in working with us so on fiber was they realized that's really the kind of connection they need in order for their in, in order to begin to use some of the aspects of online reporting. So that's sitting in WEX hands and, they, and they've and they got to figure that out. I've, I've had uh, great luck with the hub in paying my bills to WEC. I, I've, I have, I've had absolutely no problem. Works great. You can do auto pay if you want. Um, you know, it's very easy to change if you want to pay by check or by bank or by credit card. I mean, it's it's it, it's so it's so much nicer than having to fill out a, a piece of paper and send it in by mail all the time. Um, so yeah. I, I I'm I'm really glad we're using we're using uh, that. I think it'll work great. Although honestly, for having reporting, that's probably a terrible idea because if the internet is out, they can't use the app. <laughs> Understood. Well, Understood. Thank you. You that, know that was that, going to be my point, Jeremy. Oh, okay. Sorry, I had to jump in, RD. It's all right. <laughs> I drove to Montpelier today to find out what those hackers was going on. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Let, let's uh, give it back I'm to kidding. Olivia because I'm not sure that she was that she was finished. Go ahead, Olivia, please. <laughs> Uh, I just have two other items, um, two categories of items, I should say. First and foremost, events. And we will indeed be at the Barry Heritage Festival, uh, September 22nd and 23rd. Um, so this event was originally scheduled for, I believe, July. Uh, it was rescheduled due to the weather. Um, so we will be there. Uh, we have a team of volunteers that have already proactively reached out to me. Um, but if you are interested in being part of the VIP club, please let me know. Please reach out. Um, 
I do have time slots and two hour increments. Um, so we're really excited for this. Again, it's a brand awareness piece because we don't know quite yet when we'll be in the area. So we really want to start associating our name with the community. So this is really more of an informational 101 presence for us. Uh, and I think it'll be a great opportunity. Hardy? Uh, Jerry, um, two things. First of all, um, Olivia, there is an event in Cabot that you might wish to have a present at our cheese festival on September 30th. Um, uh, that's our that's the beginning of fall foliage day in the Northeast Kingdom. And uh, so we are right. Of course, Cabot is right on the edge between um, CB fiber and and uh, Northeast Kingdom, um, not to mention Kingdom fiber. Um, so it, brand awareness would be a very good thing in Cabot. The second thing I wanted to say, Jeremy said it, there's got to be a hotline for reporting outages. If your internet goes out, there's no way to report it online. So a simple hotline is, uh, you know, probably what we should have. That's, that's me. Very good, R.D., point taken. Janiel, go ahead, please. Uh, just to speak to that, R.D., we do have um, our customer service and tech support numbers on our website, so we do have that ability for folks who want to call in. It's essentially our hotline. Yeah. yeah. And the second event, which I don't have a date quite yet. However, we have done the majority of prep work behind the scenes. We've been working with uh, Minister David Healy as well. Um, we are planning a ribbon cutting event in CL01 at the Callis Town Hall uh, sometime in October. Uh, we are putting together a list for contacts for those who should be invited to the event. Again, this is more of a celebratory awareness piece for us, not necessarily lead generation for people to get signed up, but we really want to get a group together of media contacts, partners, uh, congressional delegates as well. All of you folks as well will receive an invite from us. Uh, we want to take the time to celebrate uh, now that we will be officially in CLO1. Now, we are waiting on final approval for the Callis Town Hall to be greenlit. We want this to be an opportunity for people to actually go and sign in and use our internet while they attend. So we're just waiting to hear back. And as soon as we get the green light, that Callis Town Hall will be ready to go. We will be sending that out, that invite out at least two weeks in advance. So you'll have that for the month of October. And the last piece, um, in terms of engagement strategy, we are working on a creative campaign. Now that we are actually going to be live, some of you folks may remember that we did have a postcard series that went out um, in, the, in the town of Callis for CL01. We are updating and refining some of that messaging, uh, refreshing the brand to make it a little bit cleaner and consistent, but we also wanna make the brand a bit more memorable and human as well. So we are working on those behind the scenes. And again, we're looking to place the CV Fiber brand and CL01 in high traffic locations with potentially marketing at satellite hubs. So commercial businesses that are offering free Wi-Fi for people on the go. And we think it's an it's actually a mutual value add, not only for CV Fiber, but also for our business uh, customers as well. So we are working on that um, as we expand. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you, Olivia. Any questions for Olivia, comments? Olivia, anything you want to follow up with before we move on? No, just that everybody should expect an invite for the ribbon cutting ceremony. We will sell, send, that, send that out in advance. And if you are interested in Barry Heritage Festival, I'd be happy to send over additional information. Thank you. Thank you. Alan, I'm going to pass this over to you now to give us a brief on the policy update. Again, this will be similar to what you did for the executive committee. Please just a brief on where you're at. Uh, we're not voting on anything tonight. Just let us know what you're up to, please. This is the personnel po policy, Jerry, you mean? Uh, the policy that you've been working on, I've been calling it the HR policy, but if it's a if if per, if personal 
personnel policy is more accurate than police as such. Yeah, that, that's actually what it's been titled. So that's why I'm stuck with that in my mind. But you're right, it is HR. Uh, basically, what's happened is uh, legal counsel uh, looked at our policy. If you remember, once we passed passed this back in July, um, we 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 knew we were going to have to have it gone over by legal counsel. And we have ended up with a document that's not 13 pages, but is more like 34 pages. And the number of sections that have been added is about uh, a dozen. So in addition to some changes to what we had already had in the policy, there's a lot of new material uh, in the revised policy that legal counsel has presented us with. So the policy committee dedicated its uh, uh, September regular meeting to reviewing the policy, the new, the new personnel policy. Uh, we then had a special meeting uh, on Monday to continue our review. And we're going to have another one next week to continue what's still left of what we haven't done before. It's a lot of stuff. And we hope to get a piece of it before the executive committee when it has its meeting on, is it the 19th, I think, next week on the 19th? Um, but we won't present anything to the board, the full board, until we have everything together. Um, with the executive committee, I think the only way to do it is to do it piecemeal so, it, so that committee can really take a whack at, at what we've done. Uh, but I think for the board, we really have to have the whole thing together at one time. So it's going to be another, uh, I don't know if we'll have it for October. It might be November. But we're moving as fast as we can, and it's just a lot of work. The committee's been great. I really appreciate the people who have been working on it. John and Siobhan and Linda and I and Ray. Ray was Ray's not on the committee anymore, but uh, he's He's done policy work for us in the past, and we really appreciate everybody's effort. Siobhan, I see that your hand is up, please. I just wanted to add that um, you know, this is, we're working as a committee, and so our committee meetings are available to people to come in and, and sit in and participate. So any board members who have an interest in this or are concerned about where we might be going with it or something like that are invited to attend. We encourage you to attend and remind you that we do have HR professional attorneys on this as well. So I just, I, I don't know that we, I mean, we do need to go through it bit by bit, but you might want to make sure you take a look at it before we get to the executive committee, because we're already shredding it in the policy committee, and I would like our discussion in the executive committee to be as pertinent and on point as we can make it without going wafting off. It, I, if I because we have a tendency to do that, that's why I'm bringing it up because we have a tendency to do that. So anyway, just get ahead. I'm done. Thank you, Siobhan. Got it. Uh, Alan, is there anything else you want to add here? Not unless people have questions. No, I think that's plenty. Are there questions for Alan? Okay, hearing none. Um, let's move on then to our 2024 budget discussion. Uh, when we did this last week for the executive committee, my preamble took uh, everything out of what uh, out of Ray's preamble. So I'm going to give Ray an opportunity this time <laughs> to talk about something other than the numbers. Feel, feel free. Feel free. Go ahead. You can tee it up. <laughs> but um, let me just give a 50,000 foot perspective here. And, and that is that we have run into a funding gap that we knew we were going to run into. Well, we we saw it coming. We didn't know originally. We thought we were going to have a continuous flow of funds. And we started acting based on the idea that we would have a continuous flow of funds. Then we found out that we wouldn't. And now we know we won't. So there are, there are two things that are going on uh, with this budget. One is to be accurate as possible, which is still pretty difficult because we don't have 
all that much history behind us, but we're trying to forecast 2024 the best we can. And that's on the one hand. And then on the other hand, we're trying to figure out what construction and what level of installations can we maintain through 2024, given that there will not be or likely will not be any grant funding in 2024. So, so this is the predicament that we're in. Um, and I will uh, stop there. And, and uh, if we need to go into executive session, I believe we will. Uh, Ray, I'll hand it over to you. And when we get to the point where we need to stop recording, please let, let us know. Okay, I'll, I'll start with this. And that is that um, the process is that in October, the board will approve a budget. That budget will be sent to the uh, towns, the 20 towns, and for them to review and provide feedback if they want to. In November, the board will hold a public hearing on the budget. In December, the board will actually adopt the 2024 budget. The budget's going to change between the time you approve the budget and the time we adopt the budget, because we're going to have a lot more information at, at hopefully by that time. So there will be some changes made to it. Um, the, the budget is directional and aspirational. It's directional in the sense of something we just talked about, and that is for the last five years, we've been, we've been an incubator for a startup company for the CV fiber community network. And that community network is operational. And so we have to change, um, in our governance and in our operation and in our website. There are so many things that we have to change and we have to work out a lot of details in terms of protocols, communications and oversight and uh, what the committees are going to do and not do. Um, the, the business, they do the operational stuff. The board, it does the governance stuff, policy, budgets, purchases, large purchases, There'll be a number of things that we're still responsible for as a board, but the business uh, has to operate as a business and they have to be given the kind of flexibility that's necessary. And that also the kind of resources that are necessary. And so it's directional in that sense. And it's also aspirational in the sense that we have to make some assumptions with regard to what we can possibly get, possibly get done in, um, in 2024. Uh, so in that sense, we're we're making a, a bet that we can do one more thing in 2024, and between between now and December, when we approve a budget, we'll be pretty far along in the knowledge about whether or not we're going to get a funding stream to actually do that. And so we're going to talk about that. Now, many of you have already seen a great deal of this, um, and it's not short. What we're going to go through is actually foundational for the decision and the approval that we're gonna do in October. Um, knowing you should know that the finance committee has been working on this. The executive committee is overviewing it. The executive committee will be making a recommendation to the governing board with regard to approving a budget. So it's, it's a, there's a lot of detail in the background. There's a lot of people that are working on it. So without any further ado, Jerry, unless you have something else you think in a preamble, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move that we go into executive session. I'll, I'll just ask to the group, are there any questions before we go into executive session? Because we, we need that in order to do the details. Jeremy. You're on mute, Jeremy. I apologize. Um, so we're going to be going into executive session and then we're going to be coming out of to do additional business. Is that correct? Uh, the only additional business, I believe, will be to adjourn. Oh, Perfect. Okay. I didn't realize that the agenda was so short. That's perfect. So um, I don't know everybody who's on the call uh, because we're going to invite into the call staff, delegates, alternates, and the treasurer, but she's not here. Um, if there's, if you are not a delegate, alternate, or staff, um, if you might raise your hand and there's a reason for you to be invited, uh, let us know else that's not going to happen. So here is the motion. 
Move we enter an executive session to discuss records that are confidential pursuant to 1 VSA Section 313 Alpha 6, specifically budget, strategic plans, and funding that relate to our strategic planning, and invite into executive session all staff, delegates, alternates, and the treasurer in accordance with 1 VSA Section 313 Bravo. Second. Second. Seconded by Jeremy. <sighs> are there <laughs> are there any opposed to the motion? Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. 